we think about an athlete, correct me if I'm wrong with this perception, in shape, top of their game, fit as a fiddle, healthy as an ox, whatever you know, euphemism you want to use. But what we're finding is, even if you are a really quote unquote healthy athlete, you're still at risk for heart disease. Dr. Loomis, am I off base on that? No, that, that's correct, Chuck. Um, you know, it's interesting that you know, cardiovascular disease is the number one killer uh, in the Western world. And you have to remember too that many athletes, you know, decide to in start engaging in athletics even as they get older. You decide you want to run your first marathon or your first half marathon. So you might be 30, 40 years old um, w when you start. And in those, and, and there's, you know, the, the, even though they're not professionals, they're still athletes. And in fact, everyone is an athlete in, in their own way. You know, I'd like you, to think so. Well, you know, if you c carry laundry up from the basement, you're being athletic. If you give your kids, metal. yeah, if you give your kids a piggyback ride, you're being athletic. So, and 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 the risk for cardiovascular disease starts at a very young age. We know from autopsy studies that even you know kids in their 10, 12, you know, 10, 12 years old teenagers already show are starting to show the very early signs of atherosclerosis, um, you know, the beginnings of atherosclerosis. So it, it really is a fairly ubiquitous disease in, in the United States. And, um, and but, but on the other hand, we know that, that regular physical activity markedly reduces your risk for dying from heart disease over the long run. Interesting. And, and Susan, I want to ask you, not just from your position as a co-author on this paper, but as a parent, you hear something like that, and that's, that's got to be alarming for you. Well, it is, and we've even had um, guests at our conference talk about how looking at the arterial plaque of fetuses, which is talk about mind-boggling, <laughs> that you're you're so responsible for the health of that child's heart from from the get-go, and yeah, you've got to make sure there is no pass, there is no pass for a, a young person's metabolism, right? Which is what people think. Um, you can kind of eat whatever you want as long as you look slim. And it, it goes into adulthood too, the, talking about athletes who run marathons, but their arteries can be clogged and you don't even know it because you look at them and you think um, they're in perfect health. Well, you don't know what that person eats and you don't know what's going on inside. Right. right. So we hear a lot about, well, if I'm an athlete, I need protein. And that of course means, you know, let's, let's just get the healthy meat, you know, the, the chicken breast. Detrimental to athlete? Well, it, it, what's interesting about health in general, you know, chronic disease and, and health and heart disease, it, it the, at the core of all of these, most of these chronic diseases, everything from heart disease, diabetes, cancer, at the core lies inflammation. And the Western diet is highly inflammatory. And even when we eat things we perceive are healthy, low-fat milk or, or lean chicken or, you know, low-fat beef or whatever, those things are still highly inflammatory. And, 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 and it's this inflammation that's created that um, it, it really puts us at risk for heart, not only heart disease, but many other chronic diseases. And, and it's also interesting that, that exercise, intense exercise, and I'm talking about marathon and beyond, is also highly inflammatory because it creates a lot of oxidative stress. We, we burn oxygen for fuel, and one of the byproducts of that are oxygen-free radicals. And, and those oxygen-free radicals uh, can, can interact with our blood vessel walls and create endothelial dysfunction. They oxidize the, the, the LDL or bad cholesterol particles, uh, which increase our risk for, for, for atherosclerosis. And that um, uh, people on the other or the extreme end of, of exercise may have as much heart disease risk as someone who leads a sedentary lifestyle. And that, again, a lot of that, we can offset that oxidative stress by the food that we eat. Mm. Uh, and the only source of antioxidants are plants. You know, the impetus for this paper, I think, was how popular vegan diets are with professional athletes. So people who maybe they came to that because they care about the environment or compassionate about animals, but I'm guessing the majority of the 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 line on the Tennessee Titans NFL team are actually more concerned about their performance. So they know when they eat plants and avoid animal products that they are going to be combating the inflammation that we all face and maybe even more so as, as an, kind of an 
endurance athlete, but yeah, th- there are there are performance reasons for eating this way, and it does help to be eating an anti-inflammatory diet and avoiding all those pro-inflammatory foods. Now, Dr. Loomis, in your career, you've had the opportunity to work with scores of professional athletes. You were the team internist, I believe, for the St. Louis Rams yes. before they moved to Los Angeles, as well as the baseball team, the Cardinals there. Give me an idea of how the players were, stay specific to football here, week 15, 16, late in the season. How were their bodies holding up at that point? Uh, they were sore. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, the football is a very uh, taxing on the body for, mm-hmm. for a variety of reasons, not only the physical effort, but the physical contact. And um, now I was taking care of the team before I went plant-based. Sure. And, you know, I can tell you that, that the perceived proper nutrition, you would go, you know, we would go on an away game and the games were at noon and we would have a breakfast spread and, you know, it would be steak and chicken breast and pasta. Those are the three, you know, cause you gotta get your protein, protein and your carbs. Yes. And, um, um, and, and then, you know, you fast forward and, and you, I had the opportunity to, to meet some of the Tennessee Titan players through the, the upcoming documentary, The Game Changers, which, which I'm um, proud to be in. And you talk to them and you, you know, the thing they noticed the most was their ability to recover uh, week after week after week. And, 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 and in fact, it's interesting when, when, when Derek Morgan first went plant-based, you know, he had teammates that literally almost made fun of him. Mm-hmm. And pretty soon they notice he's having the best season of his career. He's not in the training room every week. You know, he's, he's, he's recovering faster. And pretty soon they're coming up to him, you know, on the sly and saying, hey, now w- tell me again what you're doing. Because it, it does work. And when you talk to professional athletes, no matter what the sport, Olympic cyclists, Olympic weightlifters, professional boxers, long distance runners like Scott Jurek, every single one of them says that, that the performance aspect, the recovery, and the ability to show up the next day and the next day and the next day and perform at a high level and recover from that stress every day is by far the, the biggest change they've noticed. I, I remember Brendan Brazier, who does um, Iron, yeah, Iron Man, yeah. um, triathlete, professional, saying, this is years ago, uh, saying, um, I can train seven days a week, whereas my competitors train six because they have to take that day of rest to recover. I don't have to do that because my diet kind of does that for me. And that's why I have that competitive edge one extra day a week over the course of year, a year, years makes you a better athlete. Right. And I mean, I can speak to that personally. Um, I, I'm celebrating my 60th birthday by trying to kill myself in July. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Good by, idea. Uh, by, uh, I've, um, I'm training for my first full Ironman triathlon. And, and I can tell you that, that my training today is more intense and my recovery is better than it was when I was running marathons in med school 35 years ago. Wow. And, and it's pretty amazing, really. Susan, my question to you is this. Is this rapid recovery time, is it more based off of the fact that the athlete is not eating meat or is it that these plant-based foods are actually inhibiting that inflammation i mean i i see it as both i don't i can't imagine that you could do one without the other um you for the reasons we started with you, you are experiencing all this stress the oxidation and you so you need these antioxidants and and the inflammation you need those anti-inflammatory foods to support um your routine and if you don't have yes the absence is key but but you but it's it's a it's yin yang you got to have both so so the way i think about this you know exercise in and of itself is an inflammatory condition okay Mm -hmm. so imagine when we eat an inflammatory diet right we have this low-grade fire burning in our bodies all the time and then we go exercise we're putting gas on the fire right right Right? when we eat an anti-inflammatory diet a plant-based diet you, you, you've already got some water there. And so when you try to light the fire, it, it, you can't, right? Because you've already got the water there to put the fire out. And so I, I think that's the, kind of the best way to understand it. So you've got the, 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 and the difference between the low-grade fire from the inflammatory foods like meat and the water, which is the anti-inflammatory foods from plants. And that's a fairly simplistic way, but I think that's, I think that's, that's the way I visualize what's happening um, in our bodies. Um, when we think about exercise and the relationship it has to diet. 
I want to ask you, another big takeaway from this paper is the increased blood flow, the boosted blood flow, I believe is, is how it's uh, been termed. Uh, just a lay question here for you, Dr. Loomis. That is important to an athlete because why? Well, because our, our muscles burn, we need oxygen to make our muscles work. That oxygen comes from our blood, right, from our red blood cells specifically. So the more oxygen, the more blood we can deliver to our working muscles, the more oxygen we can extract and the higher our performance. And, and so a, a couple things that, that happen when you move toward a plant-based diet. So one, the actual viscosity or the thickness of the blood uh, is less, so the blood flows more easily. And probably just as important is the endothelial, uh, the, endoth the endothelium, which is the lining of the heart and controls the blood vessel dilating and constricting appropriately, uh, becomes much more reactive, especially the under, under the influence of foods that are high in nitric oxide and foods like beets and kale and things like that. And it's been shown, there's clinical studies that have shown that for endurance athletes, if you ingest beets for beet extract, for example, before you exercise, um, you can see up to a 10% improvement in, in endurance performance, and it's probably related to the increased blood flow uh, through an improvement in endothelial function that the beets and the, 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 um, the nitric oxide um, 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 causes. So, Susan, do you know of any other food that can match? I mean, that 10%, that's, that's a big boost from beets. Well, what other foods would you be recommending? Well, I think anything that has the, kind of that dark color, like cherries um, would have the same kind of effect and I'm, I'm sure they would just need the the other fruit lobbyists to do more tests to see yeah. what what their foods do but I do think that, that that conversation about viscosity is so relevant to even people who don't exercise because they've done studies over and over and over again feeding people things like here eat this drink this milkshake and eat this McMuffin and let's see what happens and the rea your body's reaction to that immediately and for hours on um, following eating that kind of food it just gets thicker and thicker and thicker and all your lab values start to go horribly wrong and that's one meal and you're talking about an American diet where we eat like that constantly right. at least three meals a day plus snacks our yeah. blood viscosity just constantly being um, thickened and, and I just kind of picture that as manifesting in these very lethargic people right. and of course you are like your blood can't even move because of your diet and it's not that study with that one high fat meal look what it does and people are like oh no it's like we have one high fat life here that's right. how we're, we're operating all the time yeah there's a great scene in the game changers where they take so griff whalen who's an nfl wide receiver is plant-based and yeah. so they take him and two of his teammates and they feed him um, burritos and griff has a plant-based burrito and his teammates have you know beef or chicken burritos and they draw their blood and then they feed them all plant-based burritos and when they show the players the blood the, the two that ate the the the, the meat-based burritos their blood was literally milky cloudy from the fat. Wow. And so imagine, you know, that sludgy blood trying to get through your blood vessels. Griff's blood was clear. Wow. On the repeat blood work, after they all three had a plant-based burrito, all three of their blood was clear, right? So there was, I mean, the, the, the visual representation to actually see that fat cell suspended in the blood was pretty eye-opening to those players. Would that blood appear similar, that, that dark and cloudy nature? Would there still be that viscosity, say, if that, uh, that fat was coming from a plant-based source, like an avocado, high in fat? I, I would imagine if you ate enough avocados, but if I recall from the scene, there was avocados on the plant-based on the plant-based uh, burritos. Go. So, uh, not, you know, obviously you do have to be careful with the overconsumption of oils. There has been some evidence that even olive oil in small doses will transiently cause endothelial dysfunction. Um, so, so there are, you know, being vegan or, or plant-based, still trying to focus primarily on unprocessed foods. Mm -hmm. So in trying to avoid the edible, highly processed edible oils, highly processed sugars, highly processed grains, which are all plant-based. But, but also can play a role, you know, have to have an adverse effect on, you know, not only uh, viscosity, but also inflammation, especially with sugar. Um, I wanted to ask you this, Susan, before we wrap up. So we've talked a lot about ultra endurance. We've talked about football. You've really had a chance to look at athletes from all sports. And I'm wondering, like, is there one sport in particular where an athlete would really see a benefit? Or is this like really across the board, you know, plant-based diet is, is really going to be in their best interest? 
considering it's in the best interest of someone who doesn't do anything and just sits on the couch, uh, yeah, across the board, it, it, it is beneficial. But I think t- to Dr. Loomis's point of the, the pro-inflammatory nature of really ultra-endurance exercise, those people who are um, – doing something that feels really great and and seems like oh this should this should combat perhaps even a bad diet or it doesn't um but it actually could be dangerous if you're not eating well i think they probably would see the most benefit or or hopefully not see the adverse effects of of not eating well and of doing um, ultra sports but um but again i i always you know most americans don't do this stuff uh, they go to the gym three days a week, and they, you know, they they too need to eat well. So I just try to underscore that. Yeah. I mean, I would agree with that. And in fact, I think the ultra endurance community is the one that's most been has embraced plant based nutrition most. Uh, it's it's a very easy sell. And and you know, when you got guys like S- Scott Jurek, or I, I had the pleasure of meeting Abby Mitchell, who's an up and coming ultra endurance athlete in Boulder. And I mean, on the list with Brendan Brazier, I mean, the mm-hmm. list goes on and on. Rich Roll, I mean, these guys that have uh, the, the, the it, because it does lend itself not only performance because you know in in those long races we use carbohydrates for example for for fuel primarily glycogen, and the the the, the nature of a plant based diet is about seventy five to eighty percent unprocessed carbohydrates. So you you know your gas it, it ensures that your gas tank is full all the time. Right. Um, and then the recovery piece. So I, I think I would agree the ultra endurance folks um, probably benefit not only from a performance uh, aspects, but also uh, the, the risk aversion, if you will, uh, because of the, oxida- the oxidative stress they create with these very long bouts of physical activity. With this paper, with the study, what is your big takeaway? We've talked a lot about inflammation today, but if there's one key piece that you want people to take away from this, what would it be? Gosh, I guess because, um, you know, I I see patients in the clinic and talk about diet all the time, and I know that half of us, half of all adults, are going to succumb to heart disease. Um, I'm I'm always struck by the benefit of eating a plant-based diet for heart health, and there were so many components of this that led to that, whether it was, um, you know, the arterial integrity or if it was blood flow um, or just getting the plaques out of your arteries all those benefits for your heart they're so important to to the non-athlete as well to me that's the takeaway is is how important it is for your heart yeah i I mean i would agree i I think what's interesting is if you if you think about the reasons that people come to plant-based nutrition or vegan diets you know historically initially was a lot of for a lot of ethical reasons and as the body of research built uh, now more and more people come through it for health reasons and then for the environment but, but raising awareness that there's a fourth way into plant-based nutrition through performance um, is real. And, and I think especially for younger, you know, athletes who may be put, you know, may still be bathed in this bro science around mm-hmm. protein and meat, uh, I think showing, you know, giving them the, the scientific kind of backing or permission to an understanding of, of, of how a, a plant-based diet can improve their performance over the long run, you know, what else does it do? Well, it's, it's ethical for the animals. It keeps them from getting heart disease and it's good for the environment. So, so I, I think my takeaway is it's really about, about opening up another door avenue for people to come to plant-based nutrition um, that, that, that transcends the traditional ways that we think about it. Again, you know, climate or environment and ethics and, and health, that, that performance is another pillar um, um, and, and again, the ankle bone's connected to the knee bone, right? So the, right. The, the great, beautiful thing about it is not only do you perform better, but you're healthier and you make the world a better place to live it. That is such a great point.